Hello friends. So today we are going to discuss the history of English literature. Now to the history of uh, English literature, first we should look at its origin. In this video, we will briefly look into the history of English literature under which we will quickly see the different eras and the poets in those eras. Now if we look uh, in like Europe, the map of Europe, before the death of Christ, there were no boundaries of nations. There were different tribes and these tribes used to rule small uh, parts of the um, areas and they were usually involved in wars and the tribe which won the battle, the language of that tribe became the official language of that place. So the earliest language uh, known to be spoken before Christ was Celtic. Another two tribes that ruled were Celts and the Gaels. So Celts spoke Celtic and Gaels spoke Gaelic. In many parts of uh, like near in the United Kingdom, uh, still there are some places where Celtic is spoken like uh, in Ireland. There is one small part where Celtic is spoken. So by 1st century BC, England was attacked by Romans under the leadership of Julius Caesar. And so the official language became late Latin. That's why we find that most of the English words are derived from Latin. Now even the alphabets of English are taken from the Latin. English didn't have its own alphabet. And by 450 AD, um, till 450 AD, English, uh, England was ruled by the Romans. By 450 AD, the, it was attacked by many Germanic tribes like Angles, Saxons and Jews. Now their dialects were spoken in the region ruled by these tribes. Now these tribes settled in, in England. At, at the earlier it was like Roman and all they did not settle but then Angles and Jews and Saxons they became the natives of England. Now these tribes ruled till the 10th century, 11th century. By 11th century, England was again invaded by the Normans and they brought with them the language of French. And after that, French became the formal language of England. Till 14th century, French was the official language. Now, in 14th century, English became the official language. By this time, English had matured into a formal language. Otherwise, it, there were different dialects being spoken in the uh, region, different region. By 14th century, English was matured enough to become the formal language. Uh, English is an of uh, many dialects that have been uh, spoken in England. Now, the first English poet is the is said to be Cadman, who was an illiterate herdsman. This marks the beginning of Anglo-Saxon poetry. Before 11th century AD, the English spoken is called the Old English, and after that, it's called the Middle English. From 11th century to 14th century, the language spoken is called the Middle English. And post that is the modern English. Now, Beowulf is the famous epic poem in Old English. This is one of the first great poem which in, in like inspired many other English poets. Now, in Middle English, the most notable uh, poet is Geoffrey Chaucer. He was, he is also known as the father of English poetry and the most notable poem of Chaucer is the Canterbury Tales. Now, in the post-graduation syllabus in MEG1 especially, we have the general prologue to Canterbury Tales and the Nun's Priest Tales. Now, these, uh, in the general prologue, there is a description of all the um, participants, all the characters of the tale. So, these two are very important uh, to uh, do for MEG1. Now, in, then after the Middle English period comes the Renaissance period from 1485 to 1603. 
it is also known as the tudor period and it includes the elizabethan period when the queen elizabeth ruled england from 1558 to 1603 the notable poem of this era is edmund spenser and the poems important poems of spenser are the amoretti sonnets the epithalamion and the prothalamion after uh, the renaissance we have a pre restoration period and the important poets of uh, this era are john dun now this period is also known as the period of uh, metaphysical poetry now the important poems of john dun are the freya twickenham gardens the good morrow extase canonization now canonization is also an important poem a valediction forbidding morning a nocturnal upon st louis day batter my heart three persons god him to god the father the other poet is george herbert and his poems are affliction the caller easter wings love the pulley redemption the windows and then afterwards is the andrew marvel and uh, three of his important poems prescribed are to his coy mistress the garden horatian ode upon cromwell's return from ireland now this period the uh, pre restoration it's also called the period of metaphysical poetry because uh, it had some qualities metaphysical means Mm, something very if it is very highly intellectual it it was very difficult to understand it has got many hidden meanings in it after the uh, pre restoration we have the late renaissance period um, by 17th century from 1608 to 1674 it was the period of john milton and uh, some of his the notable poems are on the morning of christ's nativity lycidas El Allegro, El Pensaro, mm. Sonnet. After uh, the Renaissance, from 1660 to 1700, we have the Restoration Age. This period is also called the Augustan Age, and uh, during this period, we see the rule of Queen Anne from 1702 to 1714, and this period was also called the period of Now, in this age, the notable poets are John Dryden and Alexander Pope. This was the period where again um, uh, pe the the poets started writing uh, about the uh, classical uh, heroes, and uh, this age is also referred as the neoclassical age. And both John Dryden and Alexander Pope wrote in heroic couplets. so the important poem poem of uh, john dryden is mad plecno and from alexander pope uh, a background to an epistle to dr arbuthnot this is the prescribed poem and uh, alexander pope's another poem the rape of the lock that is also very notable poem and it is good if we go through that poem then comes the age of the romantic poets from 1700 to 1821 this is one of my favorite uh, period also because uh, uh, the poems were very very like it was it is called a wide variety full of imagination so the romantic period is uh, like seen uh, like it's differentiate the differentiator point is it's uh, imaginative the use of nature is done very um, nicely and the uh, poets uh, write, wrote like on the individual experiences so the notable poets of this era are william blake and his uh, poems are the songs of innocence and the songs of experience then we have william wordsworth the prelude very important poem from william wordsworth and then from st college we have kubla khan and dejection and all then we have lord byron and pb shelley a triumph of life and john keats hyperion there's another poem from john keats la bella dame sans merci that's also very nice even all the poems of john keats 
are very very enjoyable hyperion is like one of very big poem and that's it prescribed for the post graduation syllabus so, and after uh the romantic period we have the victorian period this uh, this is the period when queen victoria ruled england but this period after the romantic period it was a contrast of romantic period romantics were like very rebellious but victorian people were very they were they believed in compromise they wanted to strike a balance between culture art and literature so the notable uh, poets of this era are robert browning alfred lord tennyson elizabeth barrett browning and jo marvel now uh, from robert browning we have uh, sordello in mantua porphyria's lover the bishop orders his tomb at st prax church child rolling to the dark tower came and fra lepo lepi now the two three most important which i've seen the question keeps repeating is porphyria's lover the bishop orders and the fra lepo lepi these three poems the, the questions and the rtcs are she now after uh, the robert browning we have dante gabriel rossetti and the poems are my sister sleep the blessed damsel and from christina rossetti we have goblin market and oscar will we have the ballad of reading after the uh, victorian period we have the modernist poet from 1900 to 1950 we have to call the modern period of poetry and the important poets are w b heath adam skirts no second troy Easter 1916, sailing to Byzantium, lapis. Then we have T. S. Eliot. He is also very, very important poem from the exam point of view. And the wasteland, the poem, is a sure shot question. Then we have Dylan Thomas, and death shall have no dominion. Poem in October, Fern Hill, a refusal to mourn the death by fire of child in London. the modernist poet we have the post modernist period from 1950 now there are two uh, poets important poets prescribed of this era one is philip larkin and we have got seven poems of philip larkin uh, namely i remember i remember towards towards revisited mr bleeny church going the witson weddings and ad brass the other important poet is Sylvia Plath she is uh, the like master of confessional poetry and the poems are the colossus daddy lady rosaris parda and ariel of which daddy is the most important and it's a must read now this uh, we will be taking each period in detail in other videos and about each poems and their poetry in detail in other videos now if you are preparing for exams and you want to make notes so the most important uh, if you have in one sheet that is the most important thing which you can just quickly revise before the exam or you should write one wonderful quote of that poet and you should write the introduction of, of the poet his life death and how he lived historical background then the introduction to the poem in which circumstances the poem was written then a brief about the poem like uh, what kind of stanzas are used what is the what does the poem want to convey convey and the uh, structure of the poem is you should write like how it is written is it a sonnet or which kind of stanza pattern it follows what is the rhyme scheme and then the texture of the poem now these six points if you mention then you are like you will understand the poem thoroughly and it would be very easy to score very high marks and after that whatever explanation and all that you can write in your own words but these things like you should have a ready note so that you can quickly remember although we'll be doing uh, the other poems and the poets in these pattern only in my later videos
so friends if you like this video please subscribe like and share with your friends and uh, see you soon again thank you